First of all, thank you to Ohio Wesleyan for having me out today and also for putting on the symposium. So like Nick said, I'm going to be talking about waste pickers in Managua, Nicaragua, Central America. Um, so to begin, in early March of this year, an estimated 100 people blocked the entrance to Managua's sanitary landfill, which was modernized and pri privatized just two years prior in 2013. The protesters, claiming to have worked as informal waste pickers in the, pri in the site prior to its overhaul, asked for employment in the recycling plant located just inside of the walls of the landfill, um, a MRF, if you will, MRF. Eventually, national police clad in riot gear arrived and dispersed the crowd. Protesters returned the following day and the next, but moved to a less visible location and did not block the entrance. Nobody protested on the fourth day or any day since then. The protests, though brief and seemingly unsuccessful, raise important questions about the economic impacts, intended and unintended, of an otherwise noteworthy development project. Before I further discuss the Managua case study, I want to provide a brief overview of municipal solid waste management in the Global South and the people that rely on it for their livelihood. So as we can see here in this graph, global waste generation is expected to grow at least until 2000, um, 2060, but perhaps through the next 80 plus years, 2100 and beyond. And this is on account of increased migration to cities, so er rapid urbanization around the Global South, and also our affinity for disposable items. Garbage management systems in the Global South, um, or actually in the Global North, excuse me, typically are capital intensive, uh, formal, disposal oriented, and also overly bureaucratic, my apologies. And may not be appropriate in low income countries like Nicaragua or some of the countries that we're going to be discussing um, later on throughout the day. So for example, 30 to 50% of municipal operational budgets may be consumed by municipal solid waste management, and this is in the Global South, so that's a huge chunk of change. Due to inadequate garbage management, we often see a proliferation of smaller spontaneous and also unauthorized dump sites throughout urban areas in the Global South. Like open air unregulated municipal garbage dumps, where I do my research, they often, smaller dumps can also harbor uh, residential um, and industrial garbage as well as toxic materials. They're an environmental and public health hazard and may be the place of employment and residence for socially and economically marginalized populations like waste pickers. Speaking of, um, as you may know, up to 2% of urban populations in the Global South specifically engage in waste picking. Um, more likely the number is closer to 1%, maybe even a half of a half a percent of urban populations. The NGO, Women in Informal Employment, Globalizing and Organizing, or WIEGO, makes it a point to identify persons who pick over garbage in search of materials of value as waste pickers and not scavengers, which can be a derogatory term. Waste picking is certainly not a new occupation. It is often carried out in garbage dumps and also public places like streets. Increasingly, waste pickers are organized to improve their condition and they're being um, helped along um, sometimes by international organi organizations like WIEGO. Waste pickers positively impact the local economy, public health, and the physical environment, though planners, city officials, and urban residents in the Global South often do not typically see this or, or understand their, their positive impacts. To examine waste picker livelihoods in greater detail, as well as the impacts of a capital-intensive project on household and community dynamics, I turn to Managua, Nicaragua, where I have been conducting research off and on for the last six years. Managua is the capital city of Nicaragua, the second most impoverished country in Latin America behind Haiti. Managua's population is approximately 1.5 million people, um, and for 40 years the city's garbage was deposited in La Chureca, a nickname meaning old rag for the city's unregulated garbage dump. In 2009, more than 1,200 tons of garbage were being deposited there every day, so about a third of, that, um, a third of the amount that's being deposited here in um, well, in Franklin County every day. Some 850 persons living, uh, lived in 220 plus homes um, in La Tradeca. There were an estimated 1,500 to 2,000 people, often entire families, working in the, in the site daily um, as waste pickers or even buyers, so intermediaries, people buying recyclables from the waste pickers. It was estimated that at least $20 million and as much as $40 million was gener generated annually um, by waste picking. 
La Trudeca was unregulated and accepted all kinds of hazardous waste, including, unfortunately, hospital waste, which this group of men sorted, cleaned, and then sold to other buyers. By 2009, nearly 40 years after its founding, uh, La Trudeca was well known throughout Nicaragua and even internationally for its horrific social and environmental problems, mm -hmm. including child labor, ill health effects on waste pickers and also nearby residents, and environmental pollution. It was around this time that the site attracted the attention of Spain's International Development Agency, much like the U.S.'s um, International Development Agency, USAID. Spain's Development Agency, which is, um, goes by the acronym of AECID, had the following objective, to contribute to reversing the situation of poverty and social vulnerability in marginal barrios of the city of Managua, improve the environmental, living, and socioeconomic conditions of Barrio Acualinca, the, home of the, or the name of the neighborhood where La Trudeca is located. The multi-year project cost about $45 million US dollars and was comprised of three major components. Environmental, housing and urban development, and also social and economic development. So first, the open air land, landfill was sealed so as to prevent further hydrological, soil, and atmospheric contamination. Rock fill reinforces the barrier between Lake Managua and the site, and leachate from the, from the decomposing garbage is collected and held in storage tanks. Additionally, a web of underground pipes collects methane gas and brings it to the surface, um, but that has not been commercialized yet. Despite these improvements in 2013, AECID estimated the lifespan of the landfill to be five to seven years, meaning another landfill will soon have to be built. And I'll just um, say, too, that these technologies are very common here in the U.S., but are rare in the global south, and so this is something that's um, very, very modern and very new. Um, oh, and also here, too, it's, it's not um, necessarily evident, but um, here is the, here's the garbage. And then there are some residents, some homes here, and then a lot of waste pickers that would enter the site lived on the periphery of the waste site. Second, the development project reloca relocated families living in La Trudeca to 258 newly constructed homes. Additionally, the Nicaraguan government has built more than 600 homes in the same neighborhood to house persons displaced in 2010 by floodwaters along the southern border of Lake Managua. Unlike before, houses are equipped with formal electricity, potable water, and sewage. Furthermore, the community boasts a public school, cultural center and museum, government-run health clinic, two NGO-run health clinics, in addition to the government-run health clinic, a nutrition project, a police center, and also two parks. And so I can't em emphasize enough the dramatic social and also environmental changes here in these communities. Third, an estimated 500, 580 people received employment in the recycling plant. Workers are paid slightly above the national minimum wage, the equivalent of US $200 per month. Much to the dismay of waste pickers who did not reside inside of the landfill, AECID prioritized the hiring of waste pickers who were, in, who were living in the waste site itself. So, so, so um, a lot of people were left without, it, without a job at, as a result of this project. In addition, some families have received microcredit loans to begin small businesses as an alternative means of um, income. To examine the social and economic impacts of the development project on waste pickers, I undertook research earlier this year in communities adjacent to the waste site. I conducted interviews and participant observation in the neighborhoods, and the, da the data that I'm sharing with you today is, um, are drawn from 146 household surveys. And here are these, um, the neighborhoods that, um, where I conducted the surveys. Um, the neighborhood in the bottom, that is uh, VG La Trudeca, those are people that used to live inside of the waste site. Um, VG refugees are those people that lived along the border of um, uh, the banks of Lake Managua and are environmental refugees. They were displaced by flooding. So on average, I found that more than one person per household worked in La Trudeca prior to its closing in 2012. That's not surprising, since, tw since 1,500 to 2,000 people worked there. In two neighborhoods, the average was closer to two people per household, so of course it was a very important source of income for these people. On average, oh, people worked uh, in La Trudeca for more than 12 years, so beginning around the year 2000 and then all the way up until 2012. 
In the present day, approximately one person for every two households that I surveyed works in the new recycling plant. And as you can see here, those people that reside in VG La Tradeca were the ones who were prioritized and given positions in the new plant. And so it is um, not surprising that more people per household on average work in the plant than in other neighborhoods. And then also we see here, unsurprisingly, since not all waste pickers were given jobs in the recycling plant, many neighborhood residents continued to pick over garbage as a source of income. This table here shows current occupations among persons who reported waste picking in La Trudeca prior to 2012. We can see that more than one third of people who waste picked in La Trudeca prior to the development project continue to waste pick, frankly, because they can't find other employment opportunities. Some work illegally in La Trudeca. They enter by climbing over a security wall as pictured here, and others waste pick in the street. In the waste site, they recover a variety of traditionally recycled materials that are missed by plant workers, such as plastic bottles, cardboard and paper, and also metals. So you saw um, garbage passes on the conveyor belts, but occasionally things are missed by the plant workers, and so it's deposited and will be picked up by waste pickers. Um, and then the waste pickers also collect materials that aren't collected by the plant in the MRF. Um, materials like electronics, for example, cell phones, and also food sacks that just aren't a priority or are not economically viable. About one third of people who did waste pick in La Tradeca prior to 2012 now work in the recycling plant, so that is good. These people have formal economic um, positions. The rest hold a variety of jobs. Some were trained by AECID in the city of Managua for careers in manual labor, and others received microcredit loans to begin small businesses. In this table, we, see, we can see the various resources, or the various sources, excuse me, of household income. First note that across all four neighborhoods, employment in the plant highlighted here um, contributes about one-fifth of total household income. This amount is highest in the community of persons who used to live in La Tradeca, VG La Tradeca, and were prioritized by AECID. Second, waste picking contributes about 15% of total household income across the four neighborhoods, which was surprising to me. What is not shown is that waste picking comprises 39% of total household income among waste pickers, a substantial amount to be sure. Average total monthly income is approximately US $435, and I apologize, these, um, these figures are, are in Cordoba, Nicaraguan Cordobas but um, highlighted in green, about $435 is the average household income. Average income per capita per day is slightly less than US $3, um, though it is near $2 per day, US $2 uh, per day, for a couple of neighborhoods, um, the, some of the poorer neighborhoods. Um, a 2009 study found, not done by me, but done by an NGO, found that about 80% of residents of La Tradeca lived in poverty and almost one half lived in extreme poverty. My findings suggest that more than 40% of households that did live in La Tradeca currently live in poverty, so poverty has um, more or less been halved, and about one in 10 still live in extreme poverty. These findings, while they are an improvement from six years ago, um, are still troubling and represent the dire situation of waste pickers um, and also low, um, the low wages in the recycling plant. Oops. And then overall, about 20% and 40% of respondents live in extreme poverty and general poverty, respectively. In conclusion, findings from household surveys confirm that hundreds of waste pickers were left unemployed by the development project. Waste picking comprises a substantial amount of household income among waste pickers and across the four neighborhoods. And also extreme and general poverty incidents across the four neighborhoods continues, which may be surprising to development officials which, you know, had, who had higher hopes for, for this project. As I considered the findings from the data, and I'll note that some of this data I've, I've just been analyzing over the last couple of weeks, so it's very fresh for me. As I consider these findings, um, I recognize that there are many policy implications. First and foremost, large-scale development projects like this, in the Global South specifically, are not necessarily a cure-all for e the economic conditions faced by uh, communities. Garbage development projects in the Global South must account for waste pickers, um, who are socially and economically marginalized, have been and continue to be today. 
As a result, projects must implement policies that are inclusive and also supportive of waste pickers, recognizing that they are not going to go away if um, you build a, a perimeter wall or make their source of income a quote unquote sanitary landfill. We have to ask ourselves, um, how might waste pickers be aided and stimulated and what roles do they play in waste management in the global south and um, here in the US, but also specifically outside of the US? And that's all I have, thank you. Awesome. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, you didn't mention uh, the upcoming building of the canal. Uh. So, yeah, that's, for those of you who don't know, that's going to be, that's predicted to be the largest development project in human history. So what types of policy implications do you predict for that? Um, I, won't, I won't speak too much about the canal. I, d I do know a little bit about it. Um, but I will say that what was interesting was um, this plan is not actually economically viable in currently. It is still being subsidized by the government. Um, and so when I said that um, when we take waste development practices from the global north and transfer them to the global south, they're, often, they're almost always very capital intensive. So right now, they're still, the city of Managua is still having to input a lot of money into the plant. So what I'm getting at is that a lot of workers, waste pickers, and formal workers in the plant are actually concerned that the plant will fail. Um, and with the canal, the canal is being um, proposed by a Chinese businessman, among other people. And a lot of plant workers are concerned that waste management will be privatized by, um, by Asian developers and then also by um, maybe just by outside corporations in general and that they will be displaced and even further marginalized. So they don't know. There's this just general uncertainty about the plant itself. It's a fascinating project and an important one. And I'm wondering, um, let me change the verb. I'm uh, thinking about parallel developments in Rio de Janeiro and in Cairo and mm -hmm. uh, Mumbai. Um, w not necessarily where an NGO has come in, but where, for instance, in uh, Buenos Aires, the municipality has decided to formalize curbside recycling, thereby throwing out of work generations of waste pickers who, through an informal structure that crosses generations, have earned the living and survived. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering what helpful sources or connections you're finding with work um, in similar contexts in other parts of the Global South, but also in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, right. So those are, those are all very good examples, and I'm somewhat familiar with them. They're some of the more well-known examples globally. Um, I'll say that what's really interesting and, f and fascinating to me in the Nicaragua case study is the connections among waste pickers and waste picker organizations. And these aren't just local or, e or even national connections, but they're having discussions, they're attending forums with other organizations across Latin America and also around the world. Um, so I think that in itself can be very powerful. Um, a lot of people that I talk with on the ground um, kind of throw their hands up and feel powerless. Um, that they're unable to change this, that this is something that was pushed on them, and it's something that they just have to frankly adapt to and, and have no choice in. But, that, but there, are, there are also many that recognize that they do have agency, um, that they do have these connections and are rapidly expanding these connections around the globe, um, specifically in Latin America, to try to better their situation, understand what's being done elsewhere, so that their economic and social condition can also um, be improved because the, the worst case scenario here um, would be that the site I think returns to that it, it doesn't that it's no longer a sanitary landfill that it reverts back to what it was before because that was that was atrocious it was not good um, for anybody but what we have here too is also highly problematic and is not helpful um, for for many people. Uh, as the research progresses, is there a sense of a deeper historical comparison 
and to see where this trend came from or how it's going to shape up as, as, as a in, in its direction and and uh, worrisome or promising in, in that sense as as far as progress is concerned historically economically and environmentally and that's the first question and, and secondly for this case study uh, in what sense and uh, do, do you have a feel that in what sense uh, that it represents the global south and is it a typical symbolic uh, or exceptional in that sense this is one case study and 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 do do we see any any uh, perspective on this as far as the global south is concerned thank you mm -hmm. um those were those are two great questions thank you so i th so what i'm seeing is that this project is rather um kind of avant-garde it's it's very um it's very new um, in the global south, but it's also, it's at the, well, specifically in Latin America, but it's also, it's not totally new, right? Um, we've seen privatization in other places, um, in Cairo, for example, in Buenos Aires, in, in Sao Paulo, um, Mumbai. Um, so it's not, it's not new. So we can draw parallels and we can look at the waste pickers and their, and their condition across but I'm also hesitant to do that, recognizing that some of the um, specificities here in the Managua case study are, are very unique. And so it, it could be problematic to also compare, but we can draw, I guess, general, you know, generalizations across, across the global south. And, and by global south, I'm, I'm, talking to, um, I'm talking about low and also middle income countries for the most part. So um, it's just a, a slightly nicer term than, um, right, than some of the other terms out there. Um, and then the, the first question was about somewhat of the historical traject traject trajectory, excuse me. Um, so this was a cross-sectional study, if, if you want to get specific. Um, I, there is some data about, some historical data about waste pickers in Managua, but it's also very much limited. Um, and that's the case for around the world. Um, Waste has only become a, a sexy topic, if you will, over the last like five, ten years, uh, maybe even fifteen years at, at most. And so there, so the data is really limited. So I'm able to piece together some of the history of waste pickers in, in Nicaragua through oral histories and interviews. Um, but as far as economic data, it's really difficult to come by because, as as you may know, for those that do research, um, asking somebody to recall their income a year ago, let alone 10 or, or 20 years ago, is very difficult to do. So did that answer your two question? Okay. One more question. All right. Oh. Yeah. If there was any issues of like crime within these landfills or if there, um, are they unionized at all, the workers, anything like that? Mm -hmm. um, That's um, so good question. It was perceived to be a very high crime place previously. Um, the people that lived there and worked there didn't necessarily think that, though. Um, they thought it was a relatively safe place, but of course every place has its, has its problems, criminal acts and things of that nature. Um, it is somewhat unionized. There have been a couple of cooperatives that have been formed. That's also very big in the, in the Global South, is supporting global um, cooperatives, local cooperatives. Um, however, one failed due to lack of funding, and that's something that the, the city of Managua could help with or international NGOs could help with. Um, and then the other is just kind of, you know, just stumbling along. Um, and so that's unfortunate. But cooperatives are, are very much thought of um, in, you know, very positively. Um, as a way to get workers to talk to one another, to organize, um, to improve their social and economic condition, and also to, you know, mainly to fight for better wages. Cool. Thank you all. <laughs>